Amen. Well, good evening, church. It's so good to be back. I know you haven't seen my face in a month, so it's good seeing you guys as well. And just to be great to be in the house of the Lord. Shall we rise to our feet, though? And just to thank God and to worship Him even now of how great He is. Even if we might not have had the greatest week, we can know that our God is still with us. And we know that uh, He has never left us or forsaken us. For many of us, we went to camp and it was a great time with it. God has put us on fire for Him. And let's just lift our voice unto Him right now. Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for who you are, Lord. We thank you for what you've done in our lives, for touching our lives, for saving us, Father. And Lord, we truly do need you more in our lives ever than before, Lord. And Lord, we welcome you here in this place, Lord. We welcome you here to come and to transform our lives here tonight, Father. That this will not just be a normal Sunday, but that this will be a Sunday where we came and we met you, Father. Where we were touched by you, the true and living God, where your Shekinah glory came and fell down upon us, Father. And we were able just to experience a fresh touch from you, Father. Lord, I pray that everything that will be done today will bring glory and honor to you that not a thing will be of the flesh that not a thing will bring glory to man but everything will be glorifying you father god for you deserve the glory you deserve the praise lord and we just welcome you here in this place father we welcome you here to, to take control to change our lives to to, to 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 really be there for us to help us in every way, Lord. We just thank you for it all. In your precious and matchless name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to worship God? Hallelujah. If you are ready, wave your hand and say, we are ready. Hallelujah. Are you ready to worship God? Are you ready to dance? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's enjoy the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, my Jesus is a life forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, my Jesus is a life. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. Don't make a move. Jesus is a life 
come and be the center. Nothing else matters.
your child. Jesus, be the center of your child. Every knee will bow, every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. Jesus, be the center of our church. Jesus, be the center of our church. Confess that name tonight. Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is power.
need you, Lord. Come, church, say, I need you, Lord. More than yesterday, Lord, I need you more. I need you in my life. Lord, fill me, Father. Touch me today. I don't want to go back to my old life. New, 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 better than new. Oh, yes, Lord, we give you the glory and the honor. Lord, we give you the praises and the honor. You're God Almighty. You're our Father. Give you thanks and praise. Church, come pray with me for a minute. Come raise your voices. Let's not go back to yesterday. Let's look at tomorrow. Every day is a new day with the Lord. Come pray with me, church. Lord, we thank you, Father. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the church. We thank you for the word. Lord, for filling us, Father. For blessing us and making us a new dimension in our life. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. We uplift your name, Father. By your faith, Father. Water us, Father. Fulfill us. Bless us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my God. Jesus' name. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Come, church. A big clap to the Lord. Oh, wow. What a worship. What a worship. So please be standing with me for a minute. We have a few announcements. Uh, so we want to welcome three people. So please raise your hand if you're that person when I say the name out. And somebody in front or on the side, look back, shake hands, welcome them to Bethany, okay? Sister Kara, did I get the name right? Sister Kara, where are you? I can't see you. Sister Kara. Okay, right. Uh, Jonathan, brother Jonathan. All right, so somebody say hi to him, please. And Prabha. Brother Prabha. All right, so to give a bear, long, warm, Bethany, welcome to them. All right, so before you go, please, there is a special foreigner after a 30 day break who has come down, Pastor Bobby. He's whiter than ever. Make sure you meet him. He has a gift for you. So in the back, there is a room. Before you go, please do meet him. Uh, just talk about church and what we can do for you. All right, um, so we are going to go into the offering straight away. Uh, stake your tithes and offering to your hand. The Lord provides. We are just back from a camp. We saw the Lord's hand on it, the way he provided for everything. Just give him thanks. And as we pray, we'll also pray for the financial needs on these cards here. All right? Father, Lord, we give you thanks and praise, Father. Lord, as we commit this offering to your hands, Father, we remember, we recall, Father, every way of finances you have opened in our lives, Lord. The jobs the businesses, Father, every avenue of income, Father. It is all through you, Father. We just thank you for it. Lord, we also remember the prayer cards of our brothers and sisters, Father, for their financial needs at this time. Lord, as we give with a cheerful heart, Lord, use this in a mighty way to bless our church, to bless the nation, Lord. Do great and mighty things, Father. Into your hands we commit this. In Jesus' name, amen. So you may come forward, put your offering, and have a seat after that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Such a great thing to see smiling faces as they put the offering in. Just giving thanks to God. Amazing feeling. All right, church. So as you know, last week we went on camp. Many of you went. Some, for some reason, couldn't make it. So a question we asked after camp was, what can we do better? And everybody said, we want two nights. We want two nights. Now, two nights, obviously, is going to cost us a bit more than one night. So what we thought as a church, as the committee that was planning the entire event, we want to plan ahead this year. So next year, 2020, our camp is going to be on the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of October, of August. 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of August. All right? Amen. One year ahead, okay? 1st, 2nd, 3rd, August. So if you have a phone, you're like me, 
plug in your calendar. If you're like my parents, you can circle on the calendar on your wall, right? Or write it on a diary, on a book somewhere. First, second, third, August next year. So we plan it around everything. If your kids have exams, don't worry. You bring them. God will bless them in abundance. They're not going to lose out on anything, okay? So first, second, third, 2020, keep the day free. Now, to go on a two-day camp, there's a bit of a bigger budget than a one-day camp. So we are looking at about 17,000 rupees in adult, okay? 17,000 might be a steep climb on that day. But if you plan a year ahead, it's about 1,400 rupees a month. So what we want to do as the camp committee is that we are going to set up an account. We want you to register right now. Commit that you're coming. Start to put small amounts. It will go to a separate account kept under your name. Don't worry. The funds will not be used for anything else. And we're going to start fundraising from now onwards. So your network leaders will tell you what we're going to do. We're going to have food stores. We are going to have movie nights. A lot of things are going to happen. So we encourage you, please be part of it. Support it. Get your well wishes involved in it. Uh, because we really want to do life together. Bethany is about doing life, sharing life, all right? So what we're going to do now is that we're going to show you a small video of camp. And this video is just to show you what happened. For some of you who didn't see, who were on camp also, you have, would have missed something. Uh, it's a good opportunity. Just look at the faces. Look at the experiences. Look at what's going through them as they enjoy. And as you know, Bethany is about fun. It's about spirituality, learning the word. So you have a mix of everything in the video. And after the video, we're going to do something very special. All right? So attention towards the video. So Family Camp 2020, experiences that create memories for a lifetime. August 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 2020. Lock the dates, don't miss out. Get involved in the fundraising. 
and let's go and camp together. One thing we always say at Bethany is that we want to do family together with you, all right? Not alone, together with you. Uh, and a few weeks ago, Pastor Dishan made a beautiful quote, one, one of the quotes I love most. God is everywhere, but the move of God is not everywhere. So the people who went on camp witnessed the move of God. And we are telling you, our church is moving to a very different season. So please don't miss out. There are so many things happening. Don't miss out. So we have a few people who want to just share something about camp. Um, so let me call on stage first, uh, Mr. Premashan, where are you? Yes. Premashan, just tell us. Was this your first camp? Yes. First camp, okay. So what was your experience at Bethany camp like? Uh, experience. I, uh, I thought it was, uh, honestly, like, if I, if I say overall, I think the camp was very underrated. And uh, so we, uh, we go on camp uh, with so much of high expectations. And, uh, and the tr truth of the matter is it's like way beyond what we expect. So, I mean, it's, it's crazy and uh, like uh, it's like a whole nother level and even like spiritually and uh, the sessions were amazing and uh, I learned so much starting from the very first session and uh, it went uh, to the, 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 as the night passed and then the day, like till the very last session, it was like, like a whole, uh, it, was, it, was, it was an amazing thing. Like uh, I, was, I was personally touched. Uh, uh, through uh, pastor's ministry and through the Holy Spirit, and uh, so uh, I thought, uh, as I said, it's 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 very underrated. Like you know, we may we may be putting so many uh, videos, pictures, and uh, you know, you name it, but uh, I don't think anyone can experience it unless you go. So, so I encourage everybody, especially the young guys and girls, to uh, make it to the next camp somehow, because uh, it is. Uh, I mean, you can't afford to miss it, miss on, miss out on it. So. Just yeah. one more. Did you have a personal experience, a personal touch of God on the day? I did because uh, in the very last session, I was uh, like, you know, as the worship was going on, I uh, uh, like, you know, from the time I went to the camp, I was uh, like desperately needing uh, a word from God and uh, like regarding my career and uh, regarding so many things in life overall. And uh, Till the very last moment, I was, uh, I was, I was, I was like, you know, uh, asking God, okay, Lord, like, uh, I want to hear something from you. And like, uh, the way I got it was so unexpected because I, I like at one point I made up my mind, okay, okay, maybe next time <laughs> I hear something. But uh, like when I, when I went on camp, I mean, when I, uh, like, like towards the end of the last session, I, uh, I went down for prayer and uh, the pastor just uh, spoke over me and uh, like I, Honestly, just couldn't take it, and like I, uh, I just immediately like uh, I just sat down there on the floor and I was like weeping and weeping. I just just couldn't hold it. Like I, I couldn't take it, and uh, it was uh, like you know uh, uncontainable. And today, <laughs> sorry. And today, what do you feel? Today I feel amazing because it's like it has been my uh, sort of driving force through the past week and. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's, uh, like, I'm sure it was a new season that began at that moment for me and uh, for many others as well. And uh, so, yeah, I'm excited and looking forward, like, really pumped up. For Amen to that. What's Amen ahead. to that. All right. <laughs> Sister Manil, can we have you on stage? So it's Sister Manil's first camp with us. So we'll ask her what her experience of camp was all about. Uh, well, I must say it was more. a very blessed and joyful Joyful time, uh, experience with the, you know the friendly experience, experiencing the friendliness of uh, Bethany family, and uh, it was blessed. It was really blessed because of the the time of the sessions. The presence of the Lord was so much, and the spirit of the Lord was moving so much in the midst of us. So it was so blessed, and also the teachings that were given on the anointing and uh, uh, the end times were so enlightening. So I think it was so, so such a blessed camp. And also 
you know, being first time at camp, I had the opportunity of taking part at the Bible's quiz. And guess what? <laughs> guess who won? <laughs> And also you would have seen some of the drama here. It was, you know, it, it was really hilarious. <laughs> so I think it was a good time and uh, it will be so good if all of us at Bethany family could join next year. Amen to that. Yeah. Thank you so much, sister. Thank you so much. So, Brother Tony Angelo, we want to call you on stage. So you caught that, right? First time in camp was on the Bible quiz. At Bethany, you get opportunity. Brother Tony, you have been with us for many, many years. You've gone to many, many camps at yes. Bethany. What was the difference this time and what uh, did God do for you? Yeah, I should say this. Uh, initially, I was not interested in the camp after much resistance from friends and Mahala camp team. So I finally decided to go in the camp. So I didn't expect much. I thought it would be a, just another family camp. I have been uh, so many family camps for the past uh, years. And, uh, and I should say this also. So during the lunch on the second day, Alton asked me the reason that I came in the camp, what I was expecting from God. I told him uh, I need a space, personal break, breakthrough and a special breakthrough in my business. So I just told him and I didn't expect it the last moment and pastor called me and I didn't know what happened. And at that time, I didn't expect in that level that God spoke to me and I felt like so free when he prayed for me and he, uh, God told me so much that uh, I was wondering how I'm going to do everything like uh, then I realized that's why God is there, we can't do it from our strength, God is, I have to depend on God. So for the past, I have been to so many camps, this is the camp I never forget. I mean, I felt, I felt the touch like it was so real and I'm still keeping the fire in, in me and I'm trying to protect that fire oh. and uh, thank God. Uh, guys, I also see at Bethany we do different things. Huh? So this is one of the very rare questions that Tony is on stage. He was very uncomfortable to get on stage, but you know, we are encouraging him today. All right. Yeah, I didn't want to come and testify then. Uh, thanks for Pastor Claire. <laughs> Don't worry. <I'll> <laughs> Tell me care. about the fire. What's happening right now inside of you? Right what, now, what are you feeling? Actually, I was, uh, before I came for the camp, I normally, I pray in the morning, like just around six o'clock. I never worship, I just pray. But I want something uh, to go beyond that. So finally, I, I wake up at 4.30. Now I worship and I, Pray and I read the Bible. I do. I do all three at once. Wow! I wow! 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 Thank you so much. Any encouragement, for young ones? Yeah, you should come for the next. Camp should next come for next year camp. Very simple. All right, Tony. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So you know, we have been speaking every day. 2020 is going to be a different year in this nation, and very especially for Bethany. So if this is 2019, you can imagine. How it's going to be, okay? So don't miss out. So next, Stephanie. Stephanie got baptized at camp. So we'll ask her. Yeah, it's a great thing. Let's ask her what her experience was in camp and about her baptism. Um, overall, yes. the camp was amazing. And especially Revive, you guys made it even Whoa! better for me. And I've heard about camp and everything from uh, Uncle Ronnie and Aunt Radhika, so I was anyway very excited. And um, my baptism, so I've heard about baptism and then I heard that it was happening during camp, so I thought why not go ahead because I already know God enough, so if there's something I can do for him, so that was it. So I went and then I got baptized. And uh, Pastor Joni did the lessons for us, and then she said, um, you go in, and then you go as an old person, and you rise up as a new. So as soon as I came out, I felt that. Wow. And I've 
felt like a big weight off me and while uh-huh. walking up to change her, so I was telling Auntie Radhika how I was feeling. So um, if I had to say something, I say um, uh, that him, uh, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I think I've been chosen. I'm actually being born again to a great family wow. now. Wow! Oh, praise uh, the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So we also had something special happening yesterday, Saturday. We had an Alpha Holy Spirit day. See, when the Lord starts to touch you, he won't stop, okay? Something special happened to her. What happened yesterday? So I uh, received the gift of tongues. Amen. Amen. Come on, Cam. Don't miss. Don't miss. Thank you so much, sister. So we want to call Mandy Huff to stage. Mandy, it's her first time camp. Uh, she hasn't been long with Bethany. How long have you been with us, uh, Mandy? Um, I attend church like a few weeks ago, uh, the camp. Right. So tell us, what was your experience? What did you expect when we invited you on camp? And what was it really when you went? Well, I was really worried because I don't know any of you by that time. <laughs> so <laughs> when my husband said, let's go for the camp, let's attend the camp. So I was really worried. Um, I don't know anyone. I will be like left alone. But to be honest, um, when I went there, it was like I met my long lost family. <laughs> I praise the Lord for making me a part of you, part of Bethany. So tell us, what stood out in camp? What was the thing that you really liked in camp? Well, I'm from a mixed religious background. Um, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior six years ago. So I'm in this journey to know Lord, to know Jesus more and more. So <clears throat> um, I'm really sorry to say this, but sometimes when I see people falling, like when they're receiving the Holy Spirit, There was a time I was thinking they're faking it. I'm sorry to say this. (laughs) But there, uh, during the session, pastor prayed for me and my husband. Actually, my husband got scared. (laughs) And I fall down too. And it was amazing. I, I don't have words to explain that feeling. Really, it was like a huge wind blow me inside out. And I still feel that fire in me. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. So, falling is real? I wasn't faking it. <laughs> <laughs> we love it, you know. She wasn't faking it. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Mandy. Can you also have Leroy and Jacqueline on stage? Awesome. Well, I'll tell you what. What wonderful stories. These are not just, these are real life stories. Leroy. So happy that you're on stage. Please take the center. Uh, I know that you had experience with the Lord. Just tell us about coming on camp, making the decision. So basically for me, uh, Pastor, I was, to be very honest, I was uh, not interested in going on this camp uh, for so many reasons. But my wife was very interested in going and I knew if I didn't, go, this one day or two day camp would have haunted me for maybe the rest of my life. <laughs> so, so I made a decision. We bought many uh, wives like this, you okay? <laughs> we really bought more wives like this. <laughs> so on my way or before we enrolled and uh, on my way, on our way to the camp, I had other plans happening in my head. Can you just so, explain what do you mean on the plans? I mean, so I mean basically you're I bought, keeping all of us as suspense please, and that's not good to do, you know? Please don't misunderstand, please but I'm me. very, I'm be, I mean, very honest. Uh, I bought my cigarettes uh, and I stopped at the wine store to get my liquor. <laughs> then she said, uh, why, why are you buying liquor? This is a church camp and you can't drink. So I was very upset. <laughs> and uh, getting closer to the hotel, I, I thought Alakanda is a good place for toddy. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought I'll get some at least two bottles of toddy. But uh, when we went to that place, even the toddy bar was closed. <laughs> so I think God had other plans for us. And um, as a person who didn't even want to go on the camp, uh, we started on the first uh, session that 
took place. And uh, from the moment we, from the moment I entered the, the auditorium, I, I felt something different. And um, I'm not a person who cries very often. I think the last time I cried was when my father passed away. But uh, I just could not stop crying from the time uh, the, the worship started. And when you uh, asked to call, this, uh, call the couples up for prayer, I just couldn't stop. And uh, thank God from, from that time onwards, I have not needed any other spirits in me. <laughs> so, and um, I also would like to uh, please hold us up in for whole keep us in your prayers and uh, pray that God will change our lives and use us to glorify his name. Amen. Amen. What a story. What a story. Amazing. 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 I want you to close your eyes. In a few minutes time, we're going to sing a song to the Lord. The Lord transforms people's lives. What I'm encouraging you to do right now is open your heart to the Lord. The sincerity of everybody who shared their stories, beginning from Premashan. He said, it's, whatever we say, we are underrating what God did. And I, I, I'm totally in agreement with him. Sister Manel was saying about the teaching the experiences, everybody, tremendous, tremendous. People having genuine encounters with a living God. Where Sister Manley would say, she would think people falling is a fake thing. But where God begin to personally touch her. So I'm encouraging every one of you, open your hearts to the Lord tonight. When as you're done from 5.30 onwards, when as begin to sing this beautiful song, open your hearts, watch what the Holy Spirit will do for you. Thank you, Lord.
visit your people. This hymn always moves every one of us because it seems to tell the story of our lives. And it tells us what the Lord can do and what He has done. I believe there are some of you in this room tonight Lord is speaking to you in a very personal manner right now of surrendering your will surrendering your life you go to church that you can experience some of you caught up you need deliverance. It's a part of this song that we're going to sing in the new one where it says, the Lord has promised good to me. Okay. And I want you to begin to pray this song over your life. Okay. Basically like you're going to prophesy over your own life. The Lord has promised to me. And this is so true. No matter how bad things may look like, the Lord has promised good. You must hold on to the promises of God. Amen. Let's do that. The Lord has promised. Yes. Yes, promise.
favor, please, to turn to your neighbor tonight. There's something happening here. When I say something, it's a move of the Holy Spirit, okay? I want to turn to a neighbor, and I want to hold somebody by hand, and I want you to pray for them tonight, okay? The worship team, I just want you to keep leading us in a little bit of worship. And pray with somebody, pray with somebody, pray with somebody. God is moving. Yes, he is moving. Oh, yes, he is moving. Come on, find a person. Pray with somebody this evening. Father, we say yes, 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 yes. Jesus, Jesus. testimony for every life that you touched you are touching and that you will touch tonight God we give you the glory Lord we recognize it's you and it's you nobody else in Jesus name Amen come on let's give the worship team amazing clap thank you thank you Sissy awesome please take your See what a fantastic evening. See, every evening is a great evening. Amen. I want to minister very quickly for a few minutes, okay? Just a few minutes. Uh, I'm trying to finish in a few minutes. Uh, the simple reason I feel led to pray, amen? I feel led to pray, so I want to pray. But I, I just want to even drop a thought. The thought is this. They say successful people have one thing in common. There are many traits of successful people, but there is one common trend that every successful person has, they say. And what they say, a successful person has this trait. And what's the trait? It's that they always want to learn. Successful people always want to learn. See, growth doesn't happen accidentally. 
growth happens by choice. And the choice that we make is that saying, I want to learn. Unfortunately, many people miss out on this. But if you want to become successful, you must begin to make the decision, say, Lord, I want to learn. The greatness about learning is there is no age. You can learn at whatever age you are, and you can learn from any person, long as you have a teachable spirit. I want to ask you a question. When was the last you learned something and you put it into practice? When was the last you learned something and you put it into practice? I want to think. Why am I saying what I'm saying is many people read the Bible. Now, there's nothing wrong in reading the Bible. We all must read the Bible. But we are called to meditate or to study the Bible. Not just read the Bible. Now, when you read the newspaper, you read it. What you get is some information from the newspaper, information that begins to add value to you, informs you about whatever. When you read it, that's all. But when it comes to the scripture, the Bible is not just being meant to be read. You're supposed to learn from the scripture. And learning happens when you take time to meditate on what you read. Say, I have met people who said, I have read the Bible. How many of you met people who said, I have read the Bible ten times? And you look at their life and you wonder if they, haven't, if they even have seen the Bible once. Because they have read it ten times. See, the goal is not to read. The goal is to meditate so that you can learn and give the Holy Spirit opportunity to begin to minister to you. So don't get caught up in all these, and I'm not by any means minimizing these Bible reading plans. Read the Bible through one year. And you feel so excited. You put a check mark. I did it. But you know, that was not the intention. Meditate. Learn. Apply. See what happens. If you want to see growth, that is what you must begin to do. They say people who are successful are people who are learning. And Bethany, I want to encourage you. Take time to meditate. Take time to go deep into the scripture. I was so happy when we did the teaching on the end times. And Pastor Reverend Professor Dr. Seneca De Silva, he named a few things about to be careful at the end times. How many of you remember those teachings? The prosperity gospel. I'm going to do a message on all these, on hopefully on... August 1st Sunday, he began to make prosperity gospel, grace, uh, Israel, I mean, what else, false teachers, what else he said, be, be careful about the holy moly people who are very religious, you remember all those? Are you okay? People who only look in for signs, he said, watch out for these people. And many people get caught into these. Because they're caught up with somebody else's info. And somebody's trying to sell that info for whatever purpose only God in heaven knows. I think it is for their personal benefit and interest, but it's not for the benefit of the body of Christ by any means. So that is why I'm encouraging you, and hopefully by end of next week, 
We're trying to set up something about the end times. Somebody would like to study about end times. But the rapture, this and that. We're trying to come up with an eight-week course that you get a good understanding about what we're trying to do. The simple reason what we're trying to do is to help you to learn so that you don't get caught. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 1, one of my favorite scriptures in this day and age. I've been speaking about this for weeks, and every week it seems that something new is happening for me. And I like 1 Samuel 16, 1. Uh, it's God is there. Samuel is there. God is speaking to him. God is giving him an assignment. And God is beginning to confront him in sins. God is saying, look what has happened to you. And so many things are happening in this one little verse. The verse starts like this. The Lord said to Samuel. So I'm, I'm calling my little talk tonight is, let's learn from Sam. Okay? It seems that everything is becoming fast forward in this day and age. So even my name is Pastor Dishan. Isn't that a nice name? But most of you call me D you now. So I thought if the better family can call me Pastor D, why can't I call Samuel Sam? So let's learn from Sam, basically, okay? That is why we are doing what we are doing. Let's learn from Sam. God is speaking to Samuel or Sam. I want to post the question. When was the last God spoke to you in a personal manner and when was the last that you obeyed God? See, God is always trying to communicate. The question is, are you interested in listening? I really believe you can thrive in your faith if you learn to hear the voice and to obey the voice. I'm going to repeat myself by saying this. I really believe you can thrive in the faith if you learn to hear the voice and to obey his voice. Yesterday, a very old friend of mine called me. And the good news is the moment he called me, I picked it up on a new number. I picked it up and... I did not want to answer. When I'm not sure who is on the other side, what I do is I pick it up, Sunit, and I don't say even a hello. Up and keep it. Then I heard this guy's voice, and he said, Hello, is Pastor Dishan there? I heard this voice, and I thought, the boy in Dishan De Silva came up, okay? I thought I want to give this fellow a run. I thought I'm going to take him around today, you know, uh, because, and I said, hello. And I replied in Sinhala. So he's looking for Pastor Dishan. I said, hello, Pastor Neha, Pastor is not there. Kau da kata karan ne. Ame Pastor ke neha da ek ka. Manko neha da ek, moka da den. Ne ne mata ko da kata karan to ne. Manko Pastor neha ne. Kohe da gila ti en ne. Ane Pastor en ne. Abu Janati Pati Varane, Janati Pati Apexe, Eker Ratagila, Moka the Pastor, Agamati Duria, the Navakila Kil, Ah, Atta, Manko, Kila Tien, Vidia Tamai, Enisa, Pastor Lankave, Nene, Ah, Mo, Kauda, Akatakarani, Nene Mamma Nadaik, Namakti, no mother. I took him for about two minutes around. Forgive me for saying this. I'm talking. The boy came out, okay? Then again, I asked him, Kevin. I said, Kauda. Then I know who. He said, Mage nama Peter. Manko hadisyad. Hadisyad tawe. Manko hadisyad nam Peter. Lagamati na vasikilete yanta. Mukadami. Amaru vetend. Isela. Now, why am I telling you this story? Listen to what I'm telling you. I was able to send Peter on a round. Do you know why? 
because Peter could not recognize my voice. And the reason I'm telling the story is this. Today there are churches, preachers, individuals who are taking you around. You know why? Because you do not know the voice of God in the Bible. So all that you are doing is you're going on circles. I want you to know circle in means not advancing. Circling means not advancing. That was the very thing that the Israelites also begin to do. They just begin to circle. And I've met many Christians, all that they are doing is they are going on circles. See, if you're going on circles, it means that you're not going anywhere. You're just going around. Only difference is some of you are circling in small circles. Some of you have chosen the big circle. The good, you're just going around, that's all. In English, it's nice, I mean, so do me a, in Sinhala, it's nice. Do me a favor, turn to your neighbor and say, Mava Raume the Yavanta Bear, right? Mava Raume Yavanta Bear. Because it's, it, it, you can't send people. Uh. You see, in Sinhala, it's nice. For those of you who do not know Sinhala, forgive me. It simply means Christiani Apiva, Deva Darwan Vana Apiva, Kadavala Tene, Raume Yanta Nove, Idriata Yanta. I mean, Raume Gila, Epavent Ode then. Tell you what, when you do not hear the voice, understand the voice, there are subtle fellows who come with godliness, rubbishy teachings, who will take you on circles. You have circle, circle, circle. That is all you have done your entire life. That is why you need to be, and I tell this, wherever it is. You need to be planted in a church like this. This church teaches you the gospel truth. We teach you the truth of the scripture. Sometimes you get offended. But how many of you know, on and off, an injection is good. Injection hurts, but it heals. That's okay. That's the way it works. Don't you get caught. I'm telling you. So hopefully, September, we will launch an eight-week study also on the end times. And many other studies are taking place. That is why you need to be a part of the Bible studies. And listen to what I'm saying. It sounds a bit strange what I'm saying. But when you study the scripture, under a man or a woman who is anointed and living the scripture, there's a transfer of the anointing that takes place. The anointing is transferred. That's so true. You cannot see electricity, but how many of you know it's flowing right now? It's the same way with the anointing. You can't see it, but it's happening. That's why, be careful. And the Lord spoke to Sam. And the Lord told Sam some very interesting things. He asked Sam a very important question. He asked Sam, the first question is, Sam, how long are you going to mourn over Saul who I have rejected? Now take note. God is posing the question to Saul, to Samuel and saying, you can choose how long you want to dwell. If you want to be sad, if you want to be depressed, if you want to be in a corner, if you want to be isolated, if you want to start complaining all of the bad things that happened yesterday and you just want to be in the corner, it's up to you if you want to stay there or if you want to move forward. You see, when God spoke to Sam, Sam could have said, God, you know what? Leave me alone. I'm still in the morning season. I'm still recovering. I'm still in shock for what has happened. God would have spoken and left. But things begin to change because Sam said, I'm going to obey. See, there are some of you in the room. We're still talking about 
things that happened many years ago. You are still lamenting over the past. How about you know by lamenting over the past, nothing is going to happen for the future. Some of you are saying, I've been so nice, but people have been bad to me. You can tell the story, but nothing changes. I've also found out there are people who like to tell their sad stories and to get sympathy. See, I'll tell you what, that's the most sickening thing. Listening to somebody over and over again and they're telling their same old story. It's like the hymn. This is my story. This is my song. And you know them for 25 years. It's the same old story. Same old song. And next time when you hear them, you want to run away. Why? You know what the song that is coming. Please. Hey. There needs to be a new song. Amen. Can you find something else about to grumble and to complain? You must. Sam, how long are you going to mourn? Pastor, you do not know. The people in the church have not treated me good. That is why I don't want to get, get involved in ministry. How long are you going to lament over a bad experience? You can do that. Pastor, I tried. It did not work. You can lament over that and be in the same place. Or you can make up your mind and say, you know what? I'm not going to be in the same place that I was yesterday. The decision is not God's. The decision is yours. Please don't blame God. Take responsibility for your life. Sam was disappointed. Sam was, as a result of it, alone. See, one of the most dangerous things is when you're disappointed to isolate yourself. Never be isolated. And be careful if you are trying to help an isolated person. Isolated person can very quickly also distract you. Lonely people are the most dangerous people. So true. Lonely people are the most dangerous people. Yeah. Sam is alone in his room or whatever you want to call it. And he hears the voice of the Lord and the Lord tells Sam, Sam, I want you to fill your horn with oil. Another problem was Sam was lonely. Sam was upset, disappointed. And the worst thing of all, there was no oil in his horn. See, oil represents the anointing. Oil represents joy. And it's sad when you see many Christians who are trying to walk the walk of faith without oil. Without oil, you cannot make it in the walk of faith. We need the oil. See, when you lack oil, your life is going to be filled with sadness. You're going to always be a picture of pity. How many of you like to be a picture of pity? When people see you, Ani, Pawapa. Some people like that. Pastor, nobody told me Pawu today. I said, Monap. Yeah. They love when somebody sympathizes and shows pity on them. Hey. When you lack the oil, that is what you're looking for. You're looking for somebody's sympathy because you have no oil. When you have the oil, you're not looking for anybody's sympathy. You know why? The oil of the Lord has filled you with gladness. Even though things are not happening the way you want it to happen, you're still filled with joy. Wherever you go, people also are impacted with it. Hey, Bethany, we need to be that sort of a people. I told you, many people have asked me, many people have come to our members and asked them the question, do you go to that happy church 
and I'm happy that the Sri Lankan church has recognized Bethany Rajagiriya as a happy church. I mean, we are a happy people. You know why? When you have the oil, you are happy. Yes. Yeah. You're happy. There's something that you are able to, you're just happy. If you're on camp, I told you the story about what do you call this? The spider and the web. The cobweb has something that sticks on it. No? You remember that, sister? Yes. How many of you, honestly, how many of you have cobwebs in your home? Let me see. If you have cobwebs at your home, lift it right up. Please do me a favor. Lift it right up. Keep it right up, please. Get a picture of this. It just tells us that you need to clean up your homes, okay? <laughs> please. It's just a simple thing that you're not doing a good job at your home. Cobwebs are not supposed to be in your home. Thank you for your honesty. And you can say, Pastor, thank you for being honest by telling us, clean up the home. See, the spider begins to create the cobweb. Insects get caught onto the cobweb because there is something like a gum that begins to even if a cobweb has touched you, you can see it's like a chewing gum. You know, try to take it, something happens. But the question I told you at the camp was, how come the spider is never trapped in the web? Others are caught in the web. The spider is never caught in the cobweb. How many of you know the answer? Oh, we have a few people. Okay, what's the answer? sister now the yes it says that there is within the system of the spider something is created and then begins to flow onto his little feet or paws or whatever you want to call it and they say oil is on the tips of the spider so what happens is he doesn't get stuck he slips through and I'm telling you this when you have the anointing you will never get stuck. When you have the anointing, you will never get stuck. That is why you need to say, Lord, anoint me. I want the anointing. I'm closing with this, okay? Because I want to pray. Seven o'clock, we take. We're learning from Sam. Sam makes a big mistake. The anointed Sam and etc. fills his horn and God sends him on this assignment. One of the mistakes Sam makes is in verse 6 in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 6. The Bible tells us when he saw Eliab. The great prophet Samuel is about to make a big mistake in his life. He was about to make a decision based on sight. So we teach you all the time to make decisions based on what you see. Base your decisions based on what the Bible says and what you hear God is saying. Tell you a true story. How many of you heard of the man called Walt Disney? You heard of Walt Disney? You know him, great guy. How many been to Disneyland? Anybody? Oh, that's a nice place to be, isn't it? Great place. It's Walt Disney, the architect behind Disneyland. Before all of this happens, he has a friend and his name is Roy. Mr. Walt Disney is trying to carry forward this great project and the first thing that he wants to do is he wants to secure a block of land for the project. Walt Disney has no money to begin to purchase this and etc. So Walt Disney speaks to one of his close friends called Roy and Walt Disney says, Roy, I want you to come with me on a drive. He says, Wal, why? He says, I want you to have a look at a block of land that I'm about to show you. And I want to give you an opportunity to purchase it. To be a shareholder together with me in this great, great project. So while he's driving with Roy, he's sharing the entire dream, the vision about Disneyland. He's just created this amazing picture, drives over hours, and they come and they stop. He stops and he tells Roy, get up. 
Walt Disney is of course very excited. So Roy also gets down and they're standing and Walt Disney says, Roy, why do you think about it? And Roy is looking at an empty, terrible looking block of land. It looks miserable. And Roy turns to Walt Disney and says, Walt, what can you see in this piece of garbage here? He says, Roy, he says, Walt, I am not going to spend a cent on this garbage. I can see no good coming out of this. To make a long story short, because Roy trusted his physical eyes, he trusted his own logic, I mean, he, lift, he missed out on one of the greatest opportunities a man or a woman can get. Because he let his eyes and his knowledge dictate to him to make the decision. See, why am I teaching you this? We walk by faith. We walk by faith. We don't make our decisions based on what our eyes tell us. We base our decisions based on what the Bible tells us and what the Holy Spirit tells us through spiritual leaders. For those of you who are planning to get married, I'm telling you, please don't look and fall in love. You are making the biggest mistake. Because I have seen many people, they get married for the looks. And they sing the song, she's got the look. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, and after about five, six years, he's really got the look. <laughs> the look has gone now. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Samuel was about to make a wrong decision. Roy made a bad decision. Because everything based on what he began to see. I want to stand up together with me. I want to pray with you a little bit, okay? When was the last you heard the voice? When was the last you obeyed the voice? Some of you need to answer the question like Sam did. Sam, how long are you going to mourn or lament over the past. Sam, how long? What you the future is far more brighter. That is what we sang. The Lord has promised good to me. Don't lament. Don't lament. It's time to make the decision. Say, so you know what I I'm going to move forward. Just lift up your holy hands together. The Lord told Sam, Sam, you need oil in your horn. Sam, I have an assignment for you. Everyone in this auditorium, those of you watching online, God has an assignment for you. You cannot complete God's assignment without the oil. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot. 
complete the assignment without the oil. You cannot live a victorious, faithful life without the oil. We need the oil. Sam, fill your horn with the oil. The Lord is speaking. He said, I want to fill you with my oil. The oil of joy. The oil of gladness. I want to fill you with my anointing. So that the cobwebs that Satan tries to spin around you will not be able to capture you. But you will slip through because of the anointing. Father, I pray that you will give these people when asked, they would ask, give them the oil. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit. Let's come and flood this place with your atmosphere. That one. Thank you, Jesus. Sing the chorus for me, please. That one. Yes. Yes. Holy Spirit, you are. specific area this could be a bit uncomfortable for you to respond but I'm going to obey this is what I have always done in my life 
not perfect but i've always obeyed those of you who are saying and recognize as if you are stuck you are stuck in life i want to pray with this group of people tonight but here is the condition and pain before you come if you are stuck and you're not happy because of that who, who nobody should be happy if you're stuck but the condition is this only come if you are willing to obey what the lord has to say now listen to what i'm saying when you stand there and wait you're in the atmosphere that's great but when you come and suddenly god gives you a word then you are responsible to obey that word you have come to a deeper level of responsibility and that is a very dangerous place where you come and you hear and you do not obey but if you are here and say you know what pastor d i don't want to be stuck i feel tonight in my spirit some chains are going to be broken deliverance is going to happen and you no know, chains be broken deliverance is going to happen it doesn't have to have this humongous manifestations deliverance could happen even while you are standing and while we are praying it could happen but if you are here and you are saying you know what i'm willing like i said when the lord spoke to sam she said sam how long are you going to wait in this place sam could have said you know what i need time to recover i want more time he could have but thank god that sam did not do that so if you are here and you say you know what i am stuck I really want to come out. And I'm willing to obey. See, one of the things we at Bethany try to do is we're a very friendly church. I love was it Lero your testimony. I'll tell you what. I have come to a realization many years ago that Disha De Silva cannot change anybody. I understand that very well. I'm only called to love. You see? I'm only called to love. And I tell people with love. That is all I can do. It's up to you. But I'm telling you, I love that story. He said, "When did we go on camp? I forget the days. Also, we went. We went on. When did we go? Fifteen. It was Monday, Tuesday. Monday. We went on Monday. He said, ever since Monday, he said I have not needed any other spirit. Isn't that amazing? I love that." I love that. I love that. Just because you open yourself to the Lord, that's all. Just because you open yourself. So if you are here and you say, "Pastor, I'm stuck. I'm going to obey." As you sing this song, Holy Spirit. If you are one of those people come right to the front and stand lift your hand so that I can pray for you know how pastor Dishan does his altar calls I pray for hundreds and hundreds of people every week but I only give 10 seconds my altar calls is only 10 seconds if you don't come within 10 seconds Dishan this is what does not pray my simple theory resides if you can't make a decision in 10 seconds the chances you are not going to make a decision simple as that I don't like people making decisions Ask, uh, that person when now I also can go for goodness sake don't come I am 27 years young I've been in the ministry for 20 years I have seen too many things I have stood in front of 10, 12, 14, 15,000 people I have seen thousands at the altar and so it doesn't make but if you are saying I'm stuck and I'm willing to obey 
You come to the front, lift your hands. As we sing, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Prayer team, come and stand with me, please. Just lift up your hands. All right. The congregation, you're going to lift it up in worshiping to help us, okay? If you are, we're a family. No matter how large God makes us, I pray that you will not forget that we are a family. When one person is at the altar for prayer, you have the right back. I pray that you will feel for the one in the front say that's my brother even when God takes us to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 the English congregation, 4,000 that you will never forget we are a family family is there to help each other so every time somebody is responding in prayer your family you need to begin to be involved in the prayer not get lost not have your own conversation because this is your brother your sister who is seeking for a touch of the Lord the best you can do is you begin to pray say God touch that brother I don't know his name touch that sister I do not know them but Lord do it because they are my brothers they are my sisters that is how we want to respond at Bethany. We are a family. We are a family. We are a family. We are a family. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit is working here. I sense it so strong. Father, we worship you.
We give you glory. We give you honor, God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Chanel, can just lift up your hands, daughter? We pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. In a decision making place, in a decision making place, in a decision making place. I see in the spirit, Nanga, you know, when the, just before the chicken, comes out, it's been hatched the cracking of the eggs and I see that in the spirit, something is happening here and it seems that I have to make a few hard decisions and not everybody is going to be happy alright but I as the, I call myself the son of the most high God I don't like to call myself the servant I'm not a servant I'm a son of the Most High God who operates as a servant of the Most High God. You know, I'm the son. As a son of the Most High God, I'm telling you this. As I lay hands, God is going to give you this supernatural power. You must make a decision. If you do not, you will live in a place called frustration. And that causes cause you to get bitter with life. And you will blame many for that. The chicken is about to come. The shell is about to crack. You need to make the decision. Now close your eyes. Father, I thank you. Shandalabah. Father, as I lay hands on this young girl. Here it comes, my sister. You just receive it. That's right. You just receive it. Don't be afraid. Just receive it. Father, I thank you for a fresh touch. Oh, yes. Here it comes. For you, for you, for you, for you, daughter. For you, for you. You may release right now. You may release right now. You may release right now. Release from the opinions. You've been stuck in between of opinions. Opinions have kept you as a prisoner, as a captive. And the Lord is saying, I am delivering you. Yes. Be delivered from the opinions. Walk. Walk in the path that I have shown you. For you will find fruitfulness. You will find freedom. You will find that peace. Father, we thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I bless you. Thank you, Lord. Dear Nanga, I do not know who you are much. But I see the Lord telling me to tell you, God is coming through, God is coming through, God is coming through. It seems that the seas are right now very rough for you. The storms are very rough. But the Lord is saying, I'm going to come through. I'm coming through. I'm coming through. I'm coming through. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. God is saying, I'm coming through, Lord. I'm coming through. I'm coming through for you. Oh yes, the Holy Spirit is shunned the home. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I hear the word first love. First love, the Lord is saying, get back to that place. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's sing. Hallelujah. Prayer team, I want to start praying. Thank you, Jesus. Ushers, stand behind the people.
Father, for Roger. Thank you, Jesus. Lord is touching you, Roger. Just receive it. Receive a fresh anointing. Thank you that you're moving. Thank you that you are moving. You're moving, God. Thank you, dear Jesus. You are moving. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Holy Spirit, I thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're, just, we're going to do one more song. Amen. Just one more song. And after, we're going to do a praise song. Okay, Mills. Thank you, Lord. I just want to encourage all of you to be a part of what is happening. Okay? Be a 
part what is happening. Be a part of what is happening. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Convince readers in a worship song, please. Yes. 